I want to give you a normal life. But I'm not normal, am I? Secret destroyer. Take her out. It's time. For my pain. Where's Hannah? Do you know how dangerous she is? I don't want to lose you. Um, so together again, it yes. must be kind of cool for you guys. Yeah, it's great. Um, you've known each other for quite a while now. After yeah. the killing, which was how many years ago was that? It started eight, nine years ago. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's incredible. Um, so is it just kind of coincidence that you guys ended up on the same show, or no? No. N no. We we always had planned to look for projects to do together to um, leave a little gap and then look for something that was really different, and. Um, and David Farr came to me with this script, and I was really fascinated by it. And um, I was actually, I had imagined that Eric would be older for some reason, so I was texting Joel saying, can you send me a list of your favorite 40-something European super interesting actors? And then, <laughs> to my delight, um, David said, you know what, who's actually at the top of our list is, is Joel. That's um, pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, so that, I mean, the idea that, you know, working with Marie again, big incentive and the writing was beautiful, beautiful. so yeah, yeah so I mean we always we always felt that it, you know when we if we reteam then it has to be something that has a very different dynamic from the killing uh, I think it, you run the risk of like some maybe people that are fans of the killing they want to see you in the same kind of roles but then it'll just be weird and yeah. Um, it, it feels like shitting on what you've done before and shitting on what you're trying to do now. <laughs> yeah. So we didn't want to shit on anything. So that's why we did this. Um, <laughs> I've only seen the first couple episodes, but so far it seems like you don't really share that much screen time together. We don't want to spoil anything. We get into it, though. Yes, yeah, we okay. do. Yeah. Episode four. Yeah, it's, that's like a little mini play between us. Okay. Yeah, And it was really cool because it, we were there on, uh, you know, I, I play this very different character. I'm with a German accent. She's completely different. Mm -hmm. And then we realized when we started playing, the flow was the same. same. Right. And um, and it just, uh, yeah, we just read each other really well. So yeah. it just, it flows and it, it's fun. Can you talk a little bit about stepping into the shoes of, of Eric? Because um, obviously he's a... It takes a pretty extreme approach to parenting. Yes, <laughs> the way he raises his, yeah. he raises his daughter, who's protecting her, but he's got to be kind of cold with her mm -hmm. when it's appropriate. Talk a little bit about uh, about getting into this character's head. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of different aspects. I think when it comes to the parenting, he's uh, really trying to figure it out, <laughs> <laughs> and um, and you know, he's driven very much by fear and and just the basic. Uh, need for survival. Uh, I think he's putting everything else on the side burner. It's just about survival, just about equipping her mm -hmm. of uh, surviving this perceived threat that he sees. Um, so, you know, that's kind of all on the page, and, and the, the psychology of that, I, I feel, is, is pretty, like, straightforward. It's, you know, everything else is just stripped away, and that's all that matters. And um, but then I had a little bit more of a... Uh, um, I wanted to wrap my head around like what it does to a person when you completely go into the wild and you just mm -hmm. alienate yourself from all human contact for, for like 14 years. So to me, that was more of my process of trying to figure that out. Um, and uh, your character yep. serves as the antagonist, mm -hmm. if you will, but you know, you, you can't just play her. <laughs> 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 you can't just uh, play her as a, a villain without any right. kind of lay layers. So what do, you, what do you bring to this character? What are you thinking about? Well, that's the gift, I think, of David Farr's writing, is that it's so nuanced, and um, he's written three, he's written three leads, you know, and, and they fill the roles of heroine and protagonist, antagonist, but all of these people are on their own journeys. They all have their powerful reasons why. Um, they all three have a strange kind of moral compass, um, and they're trying to protect themselves and the people that they love and um, and also doing terrible things. I mean, I'm not trying to turn her into something she's not. She's a murderer. But, but through... But you, put, you play her as like a murderer, but with that Marie Eno stink on it. You know, so <laughs> That's right. It's like... uh, yeah. Th that <laughs> hopefully, my goal is to draw the audience in and to for them to be rooting for her agenda as well. 
talk a little bit about working with uh, Esme, who's a very interesting, and mm -hmm. you know, she's she's a very intense young actress. Uh, she seems very serious and committed to the craft. I mean, what did you kind of learn from her working with her? And, I mean, she's great. She's uh, incredibly talented, yeah. and um, you know, she's got. Even though she's very inexperienced, she has two parents that are actors. So, I think the the the. Uh, the ideas of acting that can be really hard, that takes time to sort of wrap your head around. I mean, I, for me, it took several years to, you know, figure these things out. I think you, if you have a parent that is an actor, um, you, it, it's a lot easier. It's, uh, yeah, you, you understand it more intuitively. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, it was, it was always, um, you know, when the cameras are rolling with her, it's, mm -hmm. it's always, she's always there. You know, that's what that's what you hope, especially when you're playing with like a young, inexperienced actor. That um, that you know, sometimes it's they have to perform surgery in the editing room and just finding the moments where. But I don't think they needed that at all with Esme. She's very good. And you know, she's playing a, a girl who's trying to figure out who she is, who's in like the middle of this coming I, I, coming of age crisis. And um, and Esme herself is a is a young woman who. Um, you know, has her own kind of journey that she's on, and she was so willing to reveal that to the camera. So her performance is really remarkable. Is there any particular scene for both of you, or or maybe episode in general, that you think is maybe the highlights that uh, fans will want to look forward to, and then will walk away from going, "Wow, that that oh, I'm hooked." Really hard. For me, I think it's uh, like episode four yeah. when uh, when we have this when like we, little yeah. mini play. That to me, that was. Uh, just because it was, uh, you know, we've spent so much time together and it was so fun to come back together and get this, like, really meaty scenes to play with each other. And, and also that revelation of, even though we're playing very different characters, mm -hmm. it's it's just, it's fun in the same way as it was before. But there's, so. I had this interesting realization because we had spent all of those years in The Killing playing, you know, partners, but actually both of those human beings are people who hide. So mm. for all these years, we were like, we had each other's back and yet we were hiding from each other. And in this context, we're trying to kill each other mm. and yet we regard each other in a way that, that we never did on the killing. Because we're, we're, we're looking for the, the trick, you know, right. we're looking for the trap. Yeah. It's fun. No more secrets. Why do they want me? She smells of fear. Like a fox that knows it's dying. 